so let me talk about Christianity in particular, because I know it better. As Christianity becomes more open to dialogue and conversation with, with other religions, uh, as it uh, uh, comes to terms with the scientific worldview uh, and the religious worldview, there are people within Christianity who resist those, those changes, resist those developments. We call them fundamentalists. In, in the Christian tradition, fundamentalists. They are, they are against that. They would be against this conversation. Why should a Christian be speaking with Muslims? Uh, they they uh, reject that whole idea. Now, uh, those people are the ones who, in turn, evoke the new atheism. The new atheism is not directed toward the more uh, thoughtful and uh, self-critical elements of Christianity. It's directed against this, uh, this retrogressive version of Christianity, and I think also against uh, other elements in Buddhism and, and, and Islam as well. But uh, I think it's, it's, uh, it, it's the, the, the most hopeful tendency to me is that in the 40 or 50 years since I started teaching uh, at my university, at Harvard University, the, uh, the, the interest in religion and spirituality among young students, the younger students uh, and, uh, and others, is increasing. It's not decreasing. It's increasing uh, more and more. They, they want to take courses in religion, various religions, comparative religion, and it's not just an intellectual quest. It's a, uh, it's a personal uh, quest, searching for meaning, for, for values in life, for community, for something to live, something to live for, something to give their life some significance, and uh, this is I, I talk. This is why I think uh, we can talk about the future of faith by uh, looking at the younger generation, which is not by and large very impressed with the new atheists. A few people are, but uh, most of them are not. I think that, uh, I have noticed this even in the last 10 or 15 years, that the interest uh, among Christians in uh, dialogue with other religions is enormously increased. Five, tenfold. It's just amazing to me to see that. There was a time, let's say 25 years ago, when there would be a rare meeting of Christians and Muslims, or Christians, Muslims, and Jews, or Christians and, and Buddhists. Uh, now they happen all the time. They happen all the time, and uh, it's uh, only for the good. I think it's a very, very good development. Um, uh, I have been working for the last three years in this program called the Common Word. You know about the Common Word program, which is mainly Christians and Muslims. There was nothing like that 20, 30 years ago. Nothing. Now that was that initiative, that program was initiated by Muslim intellectuals and scholars, but there was a very rapid and positive response from Christians, and I was one of the people responding to that. I've been to some of the uh, meetings already. I think they're very, very productive. Uh, we have a large number of students at Harvard University who are studying, who are Christian students, who are studying other religions very carefully learning Arabic, studying the Quran, uh, learning the, the languages of the Buddhist scriptures, for example, patiently working very hard at this so that they can be part of this uh, conversation uh, as Christians in this wider conversation. And I think, uh, I think it's not only important, I think it's absolutely essential. Uh, we cannot be divided uh, along religious lines with with nuclear weapons in the world, with with climate change, with hunger, uh, with, uh, with still some racism in the world, and all of that, we have to be together when we when we deal with those issues. So I uh, I welcome this change, and I think the the developments that I see happening in Christianity will certainly make it easier to do that. Uh, I, I'm I'm, I'm uh, fortunate enough, blessed enough to be able to travel in various places in the world. And I meet uh, people from other religions, other religions, 
we have conversations, we, have, we, we agree on some things, we disagree on other things, but this uh, uh, deepens and enriches me and helps me have a broader view. Uh, but uh, now, of course, the, the uh, immigration patterns, very important, especially in the United States. We have uh, an increasing diversity of religions in the United States. Every year, more diverse. Uh, more Muslims coming to live in America, more Buddhists, more Hindus. And so now, when I was a small boy, I didn't know anything that there, there such a religion existed. Uh, I, hard, I hardly ever, one would hardly ever hear of them. Now, uh, you don't have to go to, to uh, Turkey uh, to find a mosque. You go 10 blocks in your city, and there's a mosque. Go another 10 blocks, there's a Buddhist uh, pagoda. And you go to uh, school, and the children you're in school with, or the university students, are from these other uh, traditions. So uh, it's, it's part of, uh, of normal life now to meet people from these other religious traditions. And the conversation, of course, takes place. So uh, I, I always insist, look, the interfaith conversation, conversations do not just take place when Harvey Cox and, and Professor Nasser <laughs> have a conversation, uh, or scholars here and there. No. They take place at snack bars. They take place in classes and in, in, uh, in uh, schools. Uh, uh, all and on, uh, people are talking with each other and learning from each other. It's a different world. Uh, and besides that, of course, now we have television. We have uh, the internet. We have Facebook. We have ways of meeting people and learning about people that are that were simply not available. It's it's a different world and. I think the religions are running to catch up uh, to uh, provide the basic orientation for people to understand the, this variety. But uh, it's, it's inevitable. It's got to happen. 